Hello and welcome to today's lesson. My name is Mrs Bunce and I will be your teacher for today. At the start of this lesson, we're going to review the activity that I set you in the last lesson. So if you've got that handy, that would be great. You also need a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper or something to jot things down. I'll be asking you to have a go at different things. So make sure you've got something handy. Let's begin. So to look at our practice activity from the last lesson. I gave you this interesting shape to start with. If you've looked at these lessons previously, you will have seen this shape before. I'm going to describe it as part of a circle. My part of a circle has been split into equal parts. So I said, name one of the parts in this picture. Did you see it was one sixth? My whole has been divided into equal parts. I use the division bar to show me. I know that it's been divided into six equal parts. So the six goes on the bottom. That's my denominator. Then if I just want one of those parts, the one goes on the top, my numerator. So one equal part is called one sixth. But then I asked how many had been shaded. Did you count four of those equal parts? In our last lesson, we used words to describe these. So I would say I have four one sixths or four sixths. Then in the second activity, I asked you to shade four twelfths because my whole rectangle had been shaded into 12, had been shaded, had been split into 12 equal parts. You needed to shade four. This is how I started. One twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths. Did yours look like that? In fact, it didn't matter what order you shaded them in, as long as you shaded four twelfths. Here's another example. One twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths. I could have shaded them in any order, as long as I shaded four twelfths. Well done. So for today's learning, we're looking at more linear models. This is a bar. In our last lesson, we looked at shapes and how we shaded different shapes. Today, we're going to see some measures and quantities. Look at my bar. How many equal parts has it been split into? Can you count them? Yes, well done. 10 equal parts. So look at that first equal part. It's one tenth. We can say, can't we? One, one tenth, or just one tenth. As we go along, I'm going to do the same for each part of this bar. I want you to have a go saying it with me. So here's the next one. Can you see two equal parts? I've now got two one tenths or two tenths. Say that with me. Two one tenths or two tenths. Well done. And we go on. How many equal parts? Well done. I've got three one tenths or three tenths. And again, how many equal tenths have I got? I've got four one tenths or four tenths. Your turn. You describe the tenths. OK, let's say it together. Check your right. Five one tenths or five tenths. They both mean the same. It's two ways of saying the same fraction. And it's really important that you can understand this, that those one tenths together, I've got five of them, five one tenths. But it's also the same as saying five tenths. Let's keep going. How many tenths now? Yes, six one tenths or six tenths. 
And your turn. Well done. I put the words on the screen, did you notice? We'll say this one together. I'm not going to put the words up yet. Say with me. Eight one tenths or eight tenths. There they are, the words as well. Your turn without the words. Excellent. Together. Nine one tenths or nine tenths. And now when my bar is full, how many tenths? Yes, 10 one tenths or 10 tenths. Well done. So for today's learning, we're looking at different ways to show many parts. So I want you to tell me, how could you show me five tenths? What would it look like? Pause the video. Can you visualize? Have a think. Okay, let me show you one solution. Five tenths. And I need to check I'm right, so I'm going back to the stem sentence from yesterday. Can you count five equal parts? Yes, I have five one tenths, so I have five tenths. But is there another way I could show five tenths? Have a think. Yes. So here I have five tenths, another way to show it. Check with my stem sentence. I have five one tenths, I have five tenths. Can you think of another way to show five tenths? Yes. Look at this, it's still five tenths. It doesn't matter where my five tenths are, as long as I have five one tenths. I have five one tenths, I have five tenths. Now look at this bar. What's the same, what's different to my previous example? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, so what's the same? The bar's the same. I still have my bar split into 10 equal parts. I've got 10 one tenths. I've shaded, that's the same. Ah, but what's different is how I've shaded. I've shaded a different amount and in a different place. Can you see how many of those tenths have been shaded? Pause the video and see if you can write down how many tenths are shaded. Okay, did you get it? Well done. I can see that there are three one tenths or three tenths. Here's my stem sentence from our last lesson. I need to count three one tenths and I now know that's the same as saying I have three tenths. Well done. It doesn't matter which three tenths I've shaded as long as I've only shaded three tenths. Now it's your turn. How could you represent six tenths? Can you have a go at copying my bar and shading six tenths? Pause the video. Okay, did you manage it? Here's my stem sentence to check. Did you count six one tenths and therefore six tenths? Let's see my example. Here's one way of showing it. I have six one tenths, I have six tenths. And again, it doesn't matter where you've shaded them, which six tenths you've shaded, as long as you've only shaded six out of 10 equal parts. Well done. Now here's another way of looking at tenths. I want you to imagine we are going to measure a piece of ribbon. Look here. I have a piece of ribbon. I want to measure my piece of ribbon. If I measure a piece of ribbon, I need to hold it next to a ruler or a tape measure. Look at my measuring stick on the screen. In my classroom, I have a measuring stick and I call it Mr. County. And he's made up of 10 equal parts and they go yellow and red 
just like this. So we now know that each of those 10 equal parts must be 1 tenth. So look at my Mr. County on the screen. I have 1 tenth. I have 2 1 tenths. I have 3 1 tenths. I have 4 1 tenths. 5 1 tenths. 6 1 tenths. 7 1 tenths. How else could I say 7 1 tenths? Yes, 7 tenths. I have 8 tenths, 9 tenths, 10 tenths all together. Now look carefully at the ribbon. Here's my stem sentence to help you. Pause the video and tell me how many tenths my ribbon is. So measure the length of my ribbon. Okay, did you count 4 1 tenths? Four tenths. So the ribbon was four tenths of a metre long. Well done. Now I have a friend, Hannah, and Hannah is doing some cooking with rice. Now let me show you my rice. This is my rice out of my kitchen. Other brands are available, but look, I buy my rice in a one kilogram bag. It looks a bit like this. But Hannah has split her rice into lots of little bags. She's got one tenth of a kilogram. Hannah's cooking recipe says she needs three one tenths of a kilogram or three tenths. Can you pause the video and show me how much Hannah would need? How many bags of rice if she needs three one tenths of a kilogram? Okay, let's have a look. This is three one tenths of a kilogram. We needed three bags. Can you remember how we wrote those? Three one tenths of a kilogram is equal to three tenths of a kilogram. There's my stem sentence from yesterday to remind us. I have three one tenths. I have three tenths. Well done. Okay. It's your turn now. I'm going to ask true or false. For each of these pictures, have I shaded four one ninths? That's the same as four ninths. So I want you to look at each of them and tell me if it's true or false. Now here's your challenge. For each picture, I want you to tell me why it's true or false. Look at the whole and look at the number of equal parts. Have a go. So how did you get on? Here's the first one. So I need four one ninths or four ninths. So I know that my whole must be divided into nine equal parts. Is that first one divided into nine equal parts? No, I've got 10, so that can't be right. Now look at the second one. I've got nine equal parts. Count them and check. Yes. And are four of those equal parts shaded? Yes, that one was correct. It's correct because I've got four one ninths shaded. Now I'm looking at that one in the top right hand corner. Have I got nine equal parts? Ah, did I trick you? I've got nine parts, but they're not equal. So that's wrong because they are not equal parts. Now look at that one there. Have I got nine equal parts? Yes, I have. Have I shaded four of my nine equal parts? Yes, I have. That's correct because I have four ninths shaded. Well done. So we're coming to the end of our lesson for today. But before I leave you, I'm going to ask you to do me a practice activity. This is what you'll need to be ready with at the start of the next lesson. Mr. Johnson will be taking you through the solution to this activity. So I'm going to ask you to do me three one eighths. We know that's the same as three eighths. I would like you to draw me three different images to represent three one eighths. So you can draw shapes, you can draw bars, 
You can draw something different. Be creative. It's fine if you want to look back through this video if you need to see some of the ideas. Can you think of an image that no one else will have thought of? And are you ready for the challenge? <laughs> Can you think of an example when you might see three eighths in real life? So that's drawing three different images for three eighths and telling me where you might see three eighths in real life. So could you draw me a story or tell me a story about where three eighths would be? Could you draw me a picture of where you would see three eighths in the kitchen or somewhere else in your home? Have a go. I hope you enjoy. Maybe you could test some of the people in your home if they can find three eighths or show three eighths in a different way. Enjoy. Thank you for joining us today. Take care. Bye bye.